Welcome to the Rat Hole. No theme music today because it's Christmas and I don't have Christmas music. But please enjoy this video that I shot, not at Christmas, on Bah Humbug. What's up Internet? Paparazzo Dave Chapman here. Today I'm at Falcon 36 in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And in just a few moments, I'm going to be joined here by Duncan, who is one of the designers included in Bah Humbug and the 12 Games of Christmas. This is an anthology game series, 13 games in this box that all use the same components and more to come. Coming out from Small Furry Games just after, unfortunately, Christmas. Uh, but join me and let's learn about Deck Build the Halls. All right, and we're back. Duncan, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little about, so let's just start with Bah Humbug as a whole. All right, so Bah Humbug is a collection of games that are being printed by Small Furry Games. Uh, it is based on the Carol, the 12 Days of Christmas. So there is 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers piping, 10 etc 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 all the way down to one single uh, partridge in a pear tree card the game collection has got the base game of Bah Humbug plus 12 games that have been designed by 12 other designers and they all come together in this one box so there's a lot of options there for your Christmas themed games there are anywhere complexity from matching games all the way up to deck build the halls which is my contribution to this which is all the higher end of the complexity scale and it's not even all that complex, so I mean, this is great for families, great for, you know, pulling out at the hol holidays when you might be playing with non-gamers. Absolutely, yeah. If you're familiar with trick-taking games like Heart Spades, uh, if you're familiar with deck-building games like Dominion, then this game is a mashup of those two categories. Excellent. So, what, what are we going to do for Deck Build the Halls? So Deck Build the Halls, as I mentioned, is a deck building, trick taking game. On your turn, uh, players are going to play a card into the trick, and unlike most traditional trick taking games, it is the lowest card that is going to win the trick. And in the event that there's two cards of matching kinds, that is the lowest card that is playing first that wins the trick. Uh, with a trick, uh, there's also going to be one card that loses a trick. It is going to be the highest card that is played last that will lose the trick. Um, and uh, again, a difference between this and other trick-taking games is if you lose the trick, you get to start the next one. Okay, so not the winner, the loser. Exactly. Makes sense. Makes sense. So the structure of the turn is that everybody at the beginning of the game is going to shuffle up their deck of cards, um, and they will take five cards into their hand. And this is pre and this is pre built with a set number of cards. Everyone has the same st That's starting correct. cards. Yeah, so everybody's got the same starting deck like most deck builders. It is one eight, two nines, two tens, two elevens, and one twelve. Uh, the objective of the game is going to be to have the most cards in your total deck that do not have birds on them. Um, and then the game will end when the last card goes from the deck into the market. Perfect. All right. Uh, so as mentioned, the structure of the game, uh, on your turn, you'll play one card into the trick. You're going to play one card into your discard, and then you'll determine who wins, who loses. The winner will get to buy a card out of the market, and their purchasing power is going to be the difference between the number on their card and the number on the card that lost the trick. The loser is going to take one of the holly out of the supply, and the holly can be used later either to boost your buying power or to outright purchase a card. All right. The cost of purchase is going to be printed on the market stalls here. So one holly, two, three, five, and seven holly, or again, the difference between those cards. So for example, if Dave led with an eight and I played an 11, uh, Dave has played the lowest card first and I played the highest card last, I would lose that one, I would take a holly, and Dave would have a purchasing power. The difference between eight and, th is, and 11 is three, so you'd be able to purchase the one, two, or the three. All right. You'll purchase all the cards in the column, and one of the special rules for this is when you add a card to the market, birds of a feather flock together, so if it is a matching number, you'll put it in the same column as the card that is already out there. Awesome. As an alternative, if you don't see any cards in the market that you wish to purchase, you can take an entire column, trash it, and you'll get a holly for that, and then you shuffle everything down and refill the market. All right. All right, so if we were to begin this, uh, I, if I lead, I might lead with the nine. Nine, huh? All right, well, I will... I will discard a card. All right, we have to discard a card as well. I always forget that one. So I'm going to play an eight. All right, so Dave has played the lowest card. He's going to win that one. So Dave takes my card and his card. Those go in his discard. Purchasing power of one, I get a holly. 
and I will buy that one. And that goes in my discard pile as well. Yes. Now everything shuffles down, bring a new card out. The 10 doesn't match anything, it's going to stay there. We've each got three cards, we draw up to our full hand of five. And because I lost that one, I get to lead on the next trip. So I'm going to lead with the eight. I will discard the ten. Ugh. And I, and I have nothing I can uh, beat that with, so I'm going to play the nine. All right. Keep you limited. That's right. So I'm going to take that one. I've got the purchasing power of one. I'm going to spend my one holly to buy the two column. Those all go in my discard. Everything shuffles down. And I get a holly because I lost. That's right. And now, because we don't have enough cards to fill our hands, shuffle the discard. And we will continue to play like this until the last card goes into the, the deck. Now, during your turn, you can spend the holly before you play a card in order to buy out of the market. So if that happens and that triggers the end of the game, you finish the trick and then resolve, discard all of the cards that have got birds on them, including the turtle dove, even though it has a turtle on it. <laughs> Uh, and then you'll count up your remaining cards. That is your victory points. You'll also get one additional victory point for every three holly that you've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and a half because damn it, I want I, ca I count that as a half, <laughs> whether it's legitimate or not, or a third. It's a third. <laughs> Counts as a holly. Eight, nine, thirty. Yeah, I I I, I think I lost. So that's really neat because because of the triangle build of the deck, yeah, you get it can end. It looks like you're you know halfway through the game. Suddenly you start getting ten stack on ten stack on ten stack on ten. Absolutely. So it can yeah. burn through that deck really quite quickly. Yeah, the end of the game can come up quite suddenly, as we saw here. Yeah, I love this game. This, this is great, and there's another twelve games in here. Yeah, absolutely. From all over the world. Yep, that's right. Um, anything from matching games, uh, they're using different components, so there's slightly different art on some of these ones uh, for different games. Uh, for the Lords of Leaping as well, so uh, the artwork is all inspired by Victorian Christmas cards, and so it's all very fantastic work. I'm quite proud of my contribution to this, and I look forward to learning and playing the rest of the games in the collection. And speaking of Christmas cards, that's, that, that's something that they're going to do going forward too, is sending right. out new games. Yes. So the plan on an annual basis is for them to run a contest in which people can use the exact same components um, in order to come up with new games. So the, the plan is to have uh, additional games every year and getting the reference cards and the rule sets for each of those every year as well as opportunities to get the entire collection up to date. Mm, as like a Christmas card. Absolutely. Mm, which is great. Absolutely. It's, it's a, a it's very a, clever concept. Yeah, it's a growing game. It's a living game. Yes, that's right. And there's just so much to it. I'm. Thank you for showing me uh, Deck Build the Halls and, and Bah Humbug. You're very welcome. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. I want to thank Duncan for coming out and showing me this. Small Furry Games, of course, for the uh, the copy of the game. The Julie's Andrews, whose music you hear at the beginning and end of the show. Legend of the Traveling Tardis and Hanging with Web Show uh, for the stream yard that I usually use to do all of my lives. All this is being recorded, so I'm not actually using that. Uh, and until next time, good gaming and goodbye.